I've got some NVMe SSDs here that you've probably never heard before, but perhaps you should. These SSDs are called the NetHack NV7000T, and perhaps they have not been so known in the US market or in the Western world, but in China much more. But now you can see a lot of these pop up on Amazon for quite reasonable prices. But the question is, should you buy them? Is it worth purchasing them? And uh, how do they perform? Let's find out. So right now the flash storage is very, very cheap and all the M.2 SSDs, Gen 4 SSDs, NVMEs are very, very affordable on Amazon and there's a lot, you know, a lot of new companies out there as well. And we're gonna take a look at this one here in this video then. So this SSD comes in three sizes, 512 gigabytes, one terabyte and two terabyte in sizes. I have tested the two terabyte and one terabyte in this video to check out what the performance is like in these. Now, the interesting thing about these SSDs is that when you open the packets, the heatsink for this is not actually attached. So you're gonna get it just like bare bones and a separate heatsink that you can just kind of peel the sticker out and then attach it to the SSD, which is how I have tested these. But you don't necessarily have to attach the heatsink if you already got like a motherboard heatsink which might be even better and even bigger than this one. In terms of specs about these SSDs you know the capacity. In terms of caching it uses SLC caching and it's DRAM less. And if you want to check out the latest pricing I highly recommend checking out the links in the description below because right now I can see a $22 coupon for the 2 terabyte model and a little bit less for the 1 terabyte model so you might get them for quite affordable prices. So firstly let's take a look at some of the synthetic speeds of Crystal Disk mark so the maximum sequential read and write speeds of the ssd let's see how fast they are now they advertise read speeds of up to 7400 megabytes per second but when i did my test on the crystal disk mark i got up to 7076 on the one terabyte model and 7111 on the two terabyte model which is right up there with the best SSDs that I, I have tested on the market, like the Samsung 990 Pro, Solidine P44 Pro, which is quite impressive. Looking at the right speeds, we see a very similar story. The NV7000T gets 6624 megabytes per second. That's the two terabyte version and the one terabyte version slightly slower, which is right up there really with some of the best drives. You can see that the very high end Gen 4 drives that the Firecuda 530, Samsung 990 Pro, KC3000 are a few percent higher, but then the second uh, kind of slot of all of the SSDs, which is Solidime, P44 Pro, Lexar, NM790, and NetHack, NV7000T here pretty much perform all the same. So again, right on the top there with some of the much more expensive drives. But let's take a look at some of the benchmarks for real world use cases. Firstly, we're gonna taste the PCMark 10 Quick System Benchmark, which basically tests the drives as a secondary drive. So you don't have an OS operating system on it, but a secondary drive that you might have in a system where you load some of the photos, you know, maybe some videos, so light use on the drive. Let's see how well does it do. So the two terabyte version here is right in the midfield there, um, just below the Solidime P41 Plus, which is interesting and shows that the random read and write speeds aren't quite as good as some of the higher end drives. And here you can see a bit of a distinction between like the higher end drives, like we see KC3000, Kingston Fury, Renegade, Solidime P44 Pro, Samsung, they are like right on the top there. And then in the midfield we see, or kind of mid lower end field, we see the NV 7000T one terabyte version and the two terabyte version in there that perform pretty much the same as the Cardia Z440 and the Lexer NM790. So kind of performs right in the ballpark where it should be. Moving on to data drive benchmark PC Mark 10, which basically tests the drive as a, more like a storage drive, right? Uh, when you store larger files, they're not so much actively working on it, but perhaps something that uh, you know stores larger files and uses bigger and more data to store on them. And how well does it perform there in terms of writing and reading? and so on. 
And here again, we can see that the NV7000T is just slightly on the lower uh, end of the bunch or somewhere in the midfield. The Cardia Z440 is a little bit faster. And interestingly, the two terabyte version performs a bit slower than the one terabyte version in this data drive benchmark. I'm not sure quite why this is, and it should be the opposite actually, where the two terabyte versions perform better than the one terabyte, but we're still better than the Lexar NM790, as you can see there, which is a bit lower. And the one terabyte version actually performs better than the Samsung 980 Pro two terabyte version, which is interesting, as well as the Solidine P41 Plus. So still quite competitive performance there. Moving on to PC Mark 10 full system drive benchmark, which is a benchmark that tests lots of actively working like projects and systems on the drive. So drives that perform well in this benchmarks are good for operating system and like actively working on your project. So perhaps a project drive as well is good for this where you're actively working with larger files and a bit more intense productivity use perhaps, which for creators, this is like what we want. So whether operating system or the project drive is what um, this would be good there. And as you can see, now we're performing somewhere in the middle of field there again. So we've got the, the Cardia A440 is slightly faster than the uh, uh, NV7000T one terabyte model, which it's, it's basically performing about the same. The Lexar NM790 is slightly faster. I mean, just marginally faster than the NetHack uh, two terabyte version of this and then on the lower end we see like the Samsung 980 Pro there actually and the Verbatim VI 7000G two terabyte version the Solidline P41 Plus so interestingly it actually performs better than the Samsung 980 Pro not quite as good as some of the high-end drives there like the Samsung 990 Pro or the Solidine P44 Pro but still very very impressive kind of performance looking at the price because it is cheaper than the samsung 980 pro or some of the more like well-known brands so perhaps going with some of the you know less known brands kind of makes sense here because it does offer a better bang for buck uh, performance for you and now the pc mark 10 drive consistency test which is very unlike real world but it just shows how well do these drives perform in the very extreme conditions extreme read and write speeds in this test we write over 23 terabytes on the drive and we fill the drive at least three times so it really really like pulls all the juice out from this drive what you can and the the test runs about 24 hours in here interestingly these NetHack nv 7000 t drives perform a little bit on the lower end of the pack just a little bit better than the z440 and the solidime p41 plus but there's quite a marginal jump between the two terabyte model of this and the Cardia A440. And here you can see the Lexer NM790, which was um, slightly slower in the previous test. In here, it actually has quite a marginal performance increase compared to the um, two terabyte version of this. So in drive consistency and absolutely hammering this, you can see that the SLC caching isn't quite doing uh, as well as some of the host memory buffer like what Lexer is using the NM790 there for, for example there or the Solidine P44 Pro and even the Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte one which was actually slower in most of the other cases in the actual hammering of it and consistency uh, they perform a little bit better than these ones here then. And there's one more thing to think about and see which is the terabyte written spec. Now this drive comes with five year limited warranty, which is usually what you see on all of the other drives, which is normal. But the industry standard terabytes written spec is about 600, what we see from Samsung, Western Digital and so on. If it's 600 per one terabyte, so you can write 600 terabytes on a one terabyte drive and delete it. And then that's kind of the drive's lifetime or five years or this, or in a car warranty, you see either 100,000 miles or like, um, you know, five year warranty, something like that. It's the same here, terabytes written and five years. But the terabytes written spec is very important for creators because if you're working with large files, for example, if you're a video editor and you're dumping a lot of big files on it all the time, then perhaps you're writing more than, you know, 600 terabytes on the five in the five years. So having a drive that has higher terabytes written spec, which basically will give you just a drive that lasts longer because you can just write on it a lot more. So this NetTac NF7000 here is actually 640 terabytes per 100 terabytes. So 
640 terabytes written for one terabyte drive and then for the two terabyte model it doubles which is very very good so it's slightly above what samsung offers really but not as good as the likes of lexer offers which is 1000 terabytes one terabyte model and then 1500 terabytes written for the two terabyte model so slightly above the average which is still interesting so now then is this worth buying and where does this drive slot in there like is it worth checking out or is it not worth checking out the one thing that we don't know about this drive is like is how reliable are they in terms of like long-term use and if you buy a thousand of these drives how many of these fail which some of the bigger brands have a better reputation to but that doesn't mean that these drives will fail that doesn't mean that these drives are bad or it is just there isn't any data on it which for some people might be a problem but if you're backing up the data anyway i don't see this as a problem and this netac nv7000t actually looks to be quite a good bang for buck unless you're really hammering this drive then probably that's not for you but if you're looking for something that's a system drive secondary drive or data drive they look quite good actually compared to like samsung 980 uh, there and is a little bit more affordable especially with the latest discount I can see which you can check out in the description below so am i saying that these are the best drives on the market not really am i saying that these are the worst drives on the market not really what really matters here is if you can find these on a good deal so that's why i'm recommending you check out the latest pricing in the description below if you find these on a very good deal then they are worth checking out and if you're looking for a secondary drive and when there's some deals on definitely worth checking out because the performance is solid the specs are solid it looks solid what can i say but if you are a creator and you want to build yourself the best bang for buck creator pc then check out the build guides in the description below whatever your budget is there's a video for you there's four videos pick the one that's closest to your budget and i'll explain everything there one more thing i want to mention is a sponsored disclaimer for this video now netac actually has sponsored this review which i have said before how can you sponsor a review i said to netac that look uh, i can review these products whenever i have time to but they were uh, insisting that we would do it sooner so i said look i'm gonna have to charge you a fee to pump you up the schedule up the production schedule and then i will review them which basically this fee is for is not sponsoring what what this is they're not going to see the video before it's launched but i charge them a fee for being kind of you know ahead of the other parts production schedule and um, that's basically it they didn't say what i needed to say they didn't influence or see the video before but here it is this is there but i just want to be honest with you just so you know what this sponsored you know means in this video and uh, that's it thanks guys for watching bye bye